Well, hello and happy Monday morning. I hope that you had a wonderful Easter Sunday yesterday. And um, this morning, I want to look at a passage just a little bit past um, Easter. Well, it's still in the Easter passages, but just a little bit past. And um, it's been kind of a tough week here. Um, we've just had some really heavy things um, with just members in our church, and you may be aware of that. Just um, families that are mourning losses or um, who are just, you know, in a season where they're walking through a valley of grief. And um, it made me kind of wonder, you know, we're in this we're celebrating and yet we don't always understand, you know, why these things happen. And that's, those are always the big questions of anything, you know, why would this happen? Why, you know, and all of the, those kinds of things. And so we just have to remember and trust that God, um, has a bigger plan than we will ever fully comprehend or understand in the same way, in the similar or same way that he did with the Lord. Um, cause I'm sure the disciples never thought that Jesus would die on a cross and yet their leader is taken and we see that and then he's obviously brought back to life but we see that in the early morning um when christ is risen so we see in john um in all the gospels we see that mary magdalene and some of the women go to the tomb and the, the stone is rolled away and we know that christ is risen and um in john in particular so i love that it says in John 20, verse 11, no, I'm sorry, in John 20, verse 1, it says, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. And then she comes back and tells the disciples. And then it says later, so Simon, Peter, and John are the ones who go to the, temp the tomb. They see, they believe, and then they go back. And it says in verse 19 it says on the evening of the first day of that week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the jewish leaders jesus came and stood among them and said peace be with you i love that little detail of the fact that the doors were locked and they were in fear and so they're in this this situation with yeah their their leader was totally you know the one that they followed their um their rabbi was completely taken and so now they're in this place of wondering you know, well, who's next? <laughs> you know, is it going to be us next? And so they've locked the doors. And then Jesus comes, says, peace be with you. And they have this wonderful experience with him. He's risen. But there's also some details that Thomas is not there. So it's only 10 of the disciples who are there. And so Thomas is not there. And that's where I want to zero in and I want to focus on. And it says, so this is John you want to join me john 20 verse 24 it says now thomas also known as didymus one of the 12 was not with the disciples when jesus came so the other disciples told him we have seen the lord but he said to them unless i see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side i will not believe a week later a whole week goes by a week later his disciples were in the house again and thomas was with them Though the doors were locked, again, the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand, and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And so let me just stop right there. And so I think sometimes when we get so caught up, and I'm not trying to trivialize this at all, in grief or fear, um, I'm one of those people that I make declarations. Uh, maybe you're one too, where you get stubborn and you say, unless this happens, I will not believe. Or unless this happens, I will not understand. And Thomas is kind of in that place. Like he knows all of these men. These are his brothers in Christ. And yet he says, unless I, you know, unless I can, can see, touch all of those things, I will not believe. And so... We have again, then Thomas comes to this place where he realizes what actually, um, that Jesus is actually risen, that it was true. And so I'm going to jump back in here at verse 28. And it says, Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. 
Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And so I love that. I love that Jesus rewards in a way, or not rewards, but blesses those who believe without having seen that um, he loves blind faith. And I think that's where that childlike faith comes in. You know, you just go with it. And when I was a kid, I know there were times when my parents would wake us up and we'd go on a trip. Um, we knew we were going somewhere. We didn't know where we were going, but we just had blind faith that we knew that where we were going, it was going to be good and it was going to be fun because we had trust in our, on our mom and dad. And those were exciting times. And to believe, to have that childlike faith, to simply believe, Christ says that 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 those who do that without having seen and simply just believe are blessed. And it, just looking at that word, I was looking at the word blessed, and I'm going to probably butcher how to pronounce this, but in the Greek, it's makarios, and it just means happy, well-off, fortunate, happy-go-lucky. You know, you are, um, obviously it doesn't have to do with, look, with luck, but, um, you know, you are blessed. All is well. And um, you're just a happy person. You're that joyful person that you are blessed. And of course, it then made me think um, of the Beatitudes and in Matthew 5. And just with everything that's been going on, um, you know, Jesus says, blessed are they. Blessed are they, you know, over and over again about different um different types of people, the peacemakers, those who mourn, those who, um, you know, he just goes on and on. And, um, but verse four says, blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. And so there's a blessing and comfort. And so it brought me back around to kind of being like Thomas, when you can't logically understand what's happening, when you can't fully grasp the whys, you can't um, you're so stuck in fear or you're so stuck in um, not even wanting to look like whatever somebody says, it doesn't even sound like reason. And it may sound extreme. You just no. I need to have this proof. Um, it made me think of these families that we know who are going through a deep, dark valley right now that blessed are they who mourn for they shall be comforted and that we have the confidence while we feel helpless um, while these families mourn, and I'm sure that they feel helpless as well, that there is comfort and blessing in knowing that God himself will comfort them and God himself will show up. And we have to believe that. We have to believe that God himself will show up. And in the same way that he comes to the disciples and says, peace be with you, we just pray for shalom over these families. And so I want you to take time today and just think about maybe some people in your life who are struggling or who, um, you know, are going through a difficult season and just pray for their shalom. And perhaps that's you today. Maybe you need to be in a place where you remember that it is a blessing to trust on the name of the Lord, even though you don't like Thomas you aren't able to touch and feel Christ. You aren't able to touch and maybe feel his presence, but simply believe it and trust on it today. And remember that there is a blessing in that. And if you are in mourning, you will be comforted because we know that God says it in his word that you will be comforted. And so I just pray that um, you take time to think on that today. And while this is not an overly joyous devotion right after Easter, it is joyous in a more quiet way in that we are blessed not only through the cross and robed in Christ's righteousness, but we are blessed by the comfort of God's presence and his peace, which surrounds us even when we don't feel it. And so we just need to trust in that and lean into it. So I hope that encourages you today. And um, I pray that you know that you are blessed.